Hi guys, welcome back to the Explorer Fly Fishing Shop. Um, today I'm going to be tying um, a teddy pattern. It's a very popular fly that the guys buy in the shop and um, on one of my recent trips yo, the Natal yellowfish could not leave this fly alone. It's got, such a, it's got an incredible movement in the water. It imitates, it imitates a little bait fish at the end of the day as well and not just a teddy pattern. Um, so just a couple of things uh, regard, regarding the pattern. Um, this is the material list. We're starting with our hooks. We're starting with the Kona, the big game hunter. Um, for today's pattern I'm tying it in a number six. Uh, we're using rabbit zonka in light olive. We're using bead chain eyes in black. City legs uh, nymph in olive bard. And then the simplifier, the new simplifier uh, predator fiber. Uh, we're actually going to spin this material. And then lastly, what we're going to use is just the, the Copex marker in dark olive. So that's the little fly over there. So to get started, just to cut this video a little bit shorter, I've actually pre-tied the, the bead chain eyes on. Uh, so we're just going to start from that exact point. Uh, once again, using the, the trusted um, Simplify Nano Silk in the 12 o So I'm just going to quickly just get the base there. So as I said, the dumbbell eyes or the bead chain eyes are already set on the hook. Uh, so from here, I've just cut through a small piece of zonka. Um, I've just wanted a little tail a little bit sticking a little bit out of the, the, the shank of the hook. We don't want it too long. Um, I find that the shorter it is, the, the less wraps you're going to get. Uh, so we're just going to tie that in. Let's get a nice little measurement there. Um, try to catch the, all the fibers in, then at least um, there's no gaps in your fly. Let's just get that to sit properly. The nano sock, obviously, you can tighten right down with no issues there. So, build the fly up. So, what I like to do is um, don't put the, the zonka strip all the way to the end, leave a little bit of a gap. So, when you spin it, uh, you can pack that, that, uh, that front little area there. From there, I'm going to put a couple of silly legs in. Um, if your legs are thick, you can put uh, one or two in. If they're the thin uh, nymph legs, you can go for uh, four legs. So you're just going to tie those um, just left and right off centre at the top. So you're just going to get those in. So exactly like bucktail and all of that, don't tighten down on the legs too close to the back. Um, what else they're going to splay? They're going to splay up. Uh, just trim those last little bits off there. From there, I'm going to do a dubbing loop. Pop that spinner in there. I'm going to shear off a little bit of zonka. So essentially you're going to tie the first part of it looking um, some inky essentially for the first part. Just grab a little bit of zonka here. Um, you don't want to grab too much. Um, it's actually just to cover that section between the spinning um, of the predator fiber and the actual tail. So you don't want to leave that section open. Because obviously when that fly gets wet, there's, there, there might be a gap there. Just shave off some of that that into the dubbing loop so you're essentially creating a little little brush uh, these D loop tweezers are, are very nice because you can get that those uh, those fibers right up into the hook uh, spread that out a little bit give it a spin make sure those first fibers don't uh, grip in itself and then just give it a light brush out. Obviously the softer fibers, you don't want to brush it too hard because you're actually going to pull those fibers right back out the loop. Um, if they're too soft, the harder fibers, it's fine. Um, but uh, materials like mink, they'll come straight back out. Um, so light brush, and then we're just going to palmer that back. Just 
make sure we can get it nice and just catch it push it all down nice and tight give it a little brush um, so if you haven't tied a minky before um, this is exactly what a minky is um, you're just going to extend uh, you're just going to do a lot more bulk of that actual zonker going forward okay into another dubbing loop and now we're going to spin the predator fibers I've just um, pulled out just a not 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 a massive strand of predator fibers because you're actually going to be folding this in half um, several times. So you'll you'll create the bulk of the obviously it'll double up in size. And so you're going to cut it in half. You can cut it in half, and you're going to do it one last time. So obviously, if you pull out too much hair, you can't exactly now go put it back. So I'd rather have less than, than more. So pop that into the dubbing loop. Spread it out as much as you can. Um, it bunches up if uh, they're too close together. Now let's give it a nice good spin. So once again you're creating uh, brushes. Brush out the front part of it first, and slowly go out the back part, because obviously the back of your dubbing loops would, would not have gripped as well as the front uh, does. So you don't want to pull out any of the fibers, so you just slowly just give it a little brush. Now, once you've got all the fibers together, then it's simply just uh, palmering it back and building that, uh, that base of the tadpole. thing to do would be if you see there's a there's a bit of a gap in between the eyes there so if you have a thick quite a thick brush um, sometimes it sets nicely that the fibers are actually over in between the eyes um, but at last you just tie in a section um, going back because you're going to trim it in any case so it's just to close that gap so same thing just make take a little bit out and just keep boss it, um, chopping it And then it's a case of just popping that over the top. Tie it down heavily, strong. Lift that front section, get a couple of wraps underneath. And then you obviously your sharpest scissors you can find uh, just to cut, to trim those, those clumps off in the front. I'm not going to do it too technical today, otherwise it's going to take a while. And then just close that down. Whoop finished closed. Give that brush out. And then we're just shaping. Obviously we want the the hook exposed as possible as we can. Um, so when I'm shaping the fly, what I do is I put my, my scissors on the actual eye of the hook and keep it at the angle and just keep spinning uh, with the, your rotation uh, rotary vise and you should get a nice uniform chop around. Let's we'll start with a, a quick trim, get that all out the way so you can see what's happening and then you can try to shape it a little bit better. Uh, you can pull that zonker down if you don't want to cut it. And you're just going to get a nice rounded shape. Obviously a tadpole has got quite a big body on it, or a big head, so you want to keep it uh, like that. And the nice thing about that is also it pushes a bit of water, 
So if you tie these in black and you're searching water, um, yeah, you're just, it's a nice searching pattern. All the materials off and out the way. Last stage would be the Copex marker um, in dark olive and it's just a case of just making that top half of that pattern a little bit darker. So obviously you can change this to whatever color you want. So if you've got a black, if you're tying a black teddy, you'd obviously tie a black zonker in and you'd have a black marker and you'd just color in the top half so there's a contrast between the, uh, the belly and the top of the, the, the pattern. You just color that in nicely there. And that is a very successful pattern, obviously in tadpole season, so coming into spring, that would be a very good pattern to, to, to use. Cool, guys, enjoy tight lines with it. Ciao.